Well, good morning, everybody. I'm Jennifer. This is A Country Life. We're going to do a day in the life today. So it is currently quarter to 11. Yesterday, I made a whole lot of tomato juice, and I got that canned up last night. And now I'm going to strain or run through my food strainer the pulp but what i do is this was completely filled with tomatoes and then as they cook down i just ladle off the juice into jars i can up that juice that juice then i use as a base for my hug and kiss soup as well as chili now i've only done this this is only the second year i've done it this way like for the last 23 years before that, <laughs> what I would always do is I would cook it on the stove, cook down my tomatoes with some onions, a little bit of celery in there, some carrots, um, maybe a pepper, a green pepper, and then I would run all of that through and I would can all of, all of the liquid with the pulp as juice. And that does give you a little bit of a thicker juice this works you can see some pulp there and then when you just shake it up it mixes it all in and so it's it's a little thinner i could with this to get that flavor i could throw in a couple onions as i cook down the tomatoes as well as i could throw in some um like carrots and celery and then it's a little bit more of a v8 juice if you like that kind of thing which uh, we really do like that flavor but the last two years i've been doing it this way and nobody has uh, complained about the chili or the hug and kiss soup tasting differently so i just keep going with it because it's also nice to have sauce on the on my canning shelves I feel like I've shown this quite a few times lately, but this is just how I do it. So I get this bolted on. Let's see, let's put this in. Put the spring on. There's different size um, strainers like this. This is the tomato apple strainer. I also have a berry strainer, and I know that there's a pumpkin and salsa strainer as well. Now this sauce, I could season up. I could put some sugar in it, put some salt, pepper, Italian seasonings, or oregano, or basil. I could do that, and sometimes I do, and I have already this year seasoned up a little bit as a spaghetti sauce, and some as a, as a pizza sauce. But usually I like to just keep it just plain, because then I have the option to use this in whatever recipe I want. So all of the skins and seeds will come out over here, sauce in here. And if the sauce is a little bit runny, then you can always put it back on the stove and uh, simmer it for 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Okay, you're hearing the loud washing machine in the background. <laughs> it's spinning out a load of sheets and blankets right now. Uh, one tip for you is I do like to take some of the scraps and put a couple handfuls through to just help push through anything that was still in there. Uh, you know, any of the tomatoes that's still in there. Uh, it just pushes that through so that I can collect all of the sauce. I've just found that once I take the once I take this whole thing apart to wash it if I don't do that sometimes I'm left with some little bits of tomato or apple or whatever it is that I'm straining gets left in there and you know I just haven't extracted all of the juice or sauce or whatever from it so uh, I like to do this just put 
a couple handfuls of the scraps through. Okay, do you see that? So that's the little bit extra that's coming through because I'm running the scraps back through and it's just helping to push out any sauce that was kind of built up inside there. I add a little bit of lemon juice to the jars so just to ensure that the acidity is high enough. Even though tomatoes are a high acid food and can be water bath canned, it's just good practice, it's safe practice to add just uh, a tad of lemon juice just to ensure that the acidity is a high enough level for safe home canning. Okay, I have all my jars filled. I ended up with seven pints and now I just have a little bit of vinegar on this paper towel and I'm just gonna wipe my rims, which it's hard to do when you're holding a camera, but I'm going to wipe these rims, get the lids on them, and a ring. The vinegar just helps to clean up the rim so there isn't, you know, you just don't want anything to diminish the seal. Okay, and I am using Golden Harvest. That's the brand lids I have right now. They've been working great. A friend of ours was at a Walmart last year and he said they are loaded up. I said I would take 20 boxes. I think something like that. So anyway, I've been using Golden Harvest lids and they've been working and I've been pleased with them. Alrighty, let's pick out some rings. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven haven't already heard me say this, save your lids from Parmesan cheese because they fit regular mouth mason jars and they're, uh, it's really nice to just have those extra lids. You know, you, you buy them at Amazon and they can be kind of pricey. So anyway, it's nice to have some of those plastic lids. You can use them for spices, other things. I keep one on the top of my salt shaker and I think right now that's the only thing I have in use. But anyway, just works great. When you put the ring on, oh well, that one's a little tarnished, you really just need it finger tip tight. When I first started canning, I thought I needed these to be on really tight and I would and I would just crank them down and I think I actually had more lid failures in those early days than I do now by just putting them on finger tip tight. If you made a mess on any jars, you want to clean that off. I dripped on that jar. I think that was the only one I dripped on, though. I have my water bath canner on, and I'm just warming up the water in there. Once it's hot but not boiling, I'm going to get my jars into there. Then I will bring it to a low boil. I'm going to have to check the time for sauce, but I think it's somewhere between, I know this is a big range, somewhere between 25 and 45 minutes. I'll just have to double check that and then that's the amount of time that I will water bath can. So I just labeled up, what is on my hand? Why do I have green on my hand? Hmm. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what that is. Anyway, I just labeled up the tomato juice that I canned up yesterday and I cannot stress enough to you to be sure to label your jars because you think that you're going to remember what is in that jar and then you start second guessing yourself because you have like a thicker juice and you're like, is that sauce? Is it juice? Is it what? Did I season that? Did I not season it? All right, so label them up. I'm gonna get these taken down to the basement now. All right, timer's going off. It was set for 35 minutes. That's, I double checked and pints were 35 minutes. So I'm just going to, I like to turn off the heat and then just kind of let it sit there for, oh, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes or so before lifting the jars out. I do also take the lid off. So let's get the lid off and just let it rest for about 10 minutes.
So yesterday I got outside and I kind of rearranged flowers a little bit. Most things are getting just past their time. <laughs> I would say a lot of the flowers are getting tired. I threw out a whole lot of flowers and just kind of rearranged to kind of bring the, the ones that still had some life left in them to kind of bring them together. Here's all the pots that I emptied yesterday. And so I do have to get all this put away here. And I think since it's all dry now, I'm gonna give it just a little one more like brush off and then get all this put away. But I did wanna go see, a little bit ago I asked Sam to go down and make some big corn shocks. So I don't know what he ended up doing or not. I, Joe and I kind of like broke off. Hi, Joe. We broke off two rows of corn stalks yesterday and made them into two big piles, but we just didn't get to um, putting them together. So anyway, I asked Sam to do that. So we'll go see what he ended up doing. Did you do the corn shocks? Yes. Are they down there still? Okay. This is kind of a nice sight. It's a beautiful day. Joe's playing basketball. We got kids in the hammock just sort of hanging out. What are you guys watching? Um, I hope you're watching. Yeah, we're playing. Sam's playing. Like, it's like a, yes, car game. a car game. Car I see. And look at this. Yeah, kitty. Look they're at so big. these kitties, how big they're getting. And they can walk and they're starting to eat real food. They are so sweet. Yeah, and they can climb out of the box now. Mm hmm. Very cute. So they were no, born, they were born September 2nd. Hey, today's October 2nd. They're one month old. Yay! Yeah. They're one month old. One month. One month old, you one month old. <laughs> Nice job, Joe. Oh, this is what you used right here? Yeah. Okay, let's not put it on top of here because remember we just got a new got trampoline it. thing? I got it. Right, yeah. Sam? Down. Yep. I'm going to go get those corn shocks and we're going to put them by the fence here. The geraniums, I mean, they're holding in there, but I can tell that they're probably getting a little bit of um, frost damage here. But I think we will... Put those, put the corn shocks here, and then we didn't grow pumpkins this year, so I'm thinking that we're gonna pick up some pumpkins. There's lots of roadside stands. I did see that Aldi had pumpkins. I want to say for like $3.49 a pumpkin, they were they were big, but honestly, I would like to just support like some local, you know, just one of those drive bys where you're driving down the road and you see a stand and they've got pumpkins. That's what I would prefer to do. So we will the next time we see a farm stand or something like that we'll just um, pick up some pumpkins put those there make sure we have pumpkins for the kids to carve yesterday i did a lot of work joseph and maria and i did a lot of work in the garden so we pulled just about everything that's a pile of of debris down there and then i do have my squash are still kind of just hanging out here so for squash, I have three, three really nice size, actually four nice size acorn squash, a butternut squash I think that is, or is that buttercup? Butternut. Uh, it's pretty tiny, so I don't know if that's going to have any flavor. And then over here I have one and two and three for acorn squash as well, but these just don't look like there's going to be much to them at all. I don't know what it was about this kind of end of the garden this year, but everything that was kind of like planted right in here just didn't seem to do real well. It does kind of go up a little, so I don't know if the water was always like running down this way and so they were just drier. I don't know. But Joe helped by pulling all the old dill. I do still have onions in the garden. So we've just been pulling onions as we need. Usually about, I usually pull about, I don't know, five to 10 onions at a time. And then we just use those. And when we need more, we come down and get some more. So I've been reminding the kids, even though the garden looks like it's done for, please do not step on the onions because they will bruise and then they will be damaged. So Maria pulled up all the tomatoes and then Joe and I did some corn shocks. Are you hiding out? 
got a lot of wind here. You're hiding out by the corn shocks? Yeah. Uh, that would make a really nice picture. Let nice. me turn this off and then take your picture, okay? Okay. Okay, snapped a few pics of Joe. So now we're going to get these lifted up and carried over there. Looks like Sam used, looks like he used, uh, I think that's electric fence wire actually. Well, I guess it's probably what he could find. All right, so Peter, yeah, I guess I was gonna tell you what to do, but it looks like you got it figured out. As tight as you possibly can get it so that it doesn't blow over in the wind, and then maybe even do, I think you, are you gonna do that tighter than that? No. What? Yeah. Yeah, here, let me here, hold, it. hold it. Okay. And then I think even another one would be good. Maybe knot it a couple times, and then maybe even do another one around, even if you don't go around the whole corn shock, but if you can just weave it through some of these here and tie it kind of lower, that would be good. Spider webs off my face. Get the spider webs off, yep. yep. <laughs> well, How are we doing? great. I got all that tomato sauce canned up. Great, good. Yeah. How's the crop look? Uh, bed five's heavier than bed four. Bed four is kind of meh. Meh. Yeah, bed five. It looks pretty good. Looks good. That's good. Bed four, I mean, meh. the light. It's hard to oh, even yeah. see it right it now in this in this light. Maybe the other angle would be better. And everything's one layer deep, so it looks like a lot. But I mean, it'll be a good crop. It won't be <laughs> won't be a great crop, but it'll be a good one. I now was just going to run be... the cleaner down. I pulled the frost alarm out of bed two, moved it down to bed um, thirteen. Pulled a couple thermometers, so I just gotta get the berry cleaner down to the end. And then the only other thing I have to do yet today, besides pull pipe on bed one, is get the semi down there. Okay. You got a little time because when I get down there, you can pick me up with the Toyota. Yes, I do have time. So we're probably uh, as soon as I get this down, uh, I'll actually start putting some water on bed one, and then I gotta bring the kitchen. So All right, I thought I would turn on the camera from this angle because lighting is so much better on this side. And the sun went behind the clouds, so we get really, really good lighting here. Doesn't that look beautiful? Yeah. It's a good crop. It. Not great crop, but it's a good crop. I just love it. I love the way it looks. Yeah, it is beautiful. Fall colors are popping out. It goes the sky. Well with the trees, yeah. yeah, just the grass is always so green on the dikes this time of year. <laughs> it just looks so pretty. Orange tractor pops with the color. Um, <laughs> I guess it's an acquired taste. <laughs> I'll zoom in so we can see there that orange tractor. Yeah. There, now, now you can say it again. <laughs> yeah, that color really pops, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, With all it the does. fall colors. Well, what's up next? Yeah, I get some lunch. I don't even have any for you. That's perfect. Oh, hey, look who's up there. Coming behind the pump house. Oh, I recognize the shoes. <laughs> So I really lucked out for supper tonight. Uncle Dan is here. He's going to be here for the next couple of weeks for a cranberry harvest again. And he brought stew. So thanks, Aunt Sandy. <laughs> so I have one um, bucket of stew here. I put it in the crock pot. And I'm just going to get that warming. And hopefully by the time um, 
yeah around supper time it should be hot and we are going to have some stew and then I just have I have a can of refrigerator biscuits in the well in the refrigerator so I will make those and supper is basically already done the tomato sauce is finished here, but I want to show you something. I had one jar that did not seal, and so I just want to... I know for like beginner canners, you might be wondering like, how do you know that it didn't seal? Well, there's a couple things. One, um, there's like a little impression, and it's hard to see in here, but your, your, the lid should have a little uh, depression. And this one does, and that's because when I tapped it, it kind of went down, but it's more by sound. So listen to this. This one sounds hollow. I can even do another one for you. So that's how you know that this one did not seal. So this I will either reseal, which means I'll just can it again if I have another canner full of something in the next couple of days. Um, otherwise, we'll just use this within a week. And yeah, that's usually what I do is just use it up soon if I have something that doesn't seal. There is a biscuit in there. Mm -hmm. <laughs>